Don't you know that the music should be soft? What the fuck is, is going, going on? on? Theo? What the fuck is going on? Look at you. Like, can, when can we see this movie? Next week? You wrap next week. Can I see it Sunday? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll pull the dailies. They'll pull the dailies just for me? Let me tell you something. We're still in the same location. I'm just in a, I'm just in a different angle here. And um, I know why, and I can't tell anybody. <laughs> I know why, because I'm Kim Coates, Kim Cotes. That's right, Kim Cote. Kim Cote. Cote. So you're in you're in a different you're in the same hotel, different hotel, different location. I just found out from HBO I'm gonna be here for a year and a half. So a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, we're having yeah. a couple of issues here on my living Farms. there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be here for about a year and a half. It's okay. Um, just keep Listen, dying my hair and dying my sideburns. What the fuck? Yeah, just hide out like you're on the run. <laughs> um, this is this is um a lot of people are gonna uh I wanna say a couple of things before we get started. Please. First and foremost, thank you to everyone who listens to this show for letting the two dumbasses who are on this thing right I'm now. I'm dumbass one, you dumbass one A. Dumbass one A, dumbass one, but dumbass one A, which is me, listen to dumbass one, which was you, <laughs> who said <laughs> who said Opie, we lose Opie in episode five, which yep. by the way is a fucking lie. We don't Comple- lose him in episode completely five. wrong. Okay. So you if you he's still in it, episode five, though. That's right, he is. And you were we right know where he that. is. He's laying down at that time. That's right. So here you and I are thinking, Woo. oh, we got time. Let's get Emilio on. Let's just have a cool episode of us doing whatever, not knowing that this is one of the most monumental I episodes. I know nothing. I know nothing. Nothing, you know, Now, do you know why this... So, point is, this is the most monumental episode beyond the episode, which we'll explain, because this symbolized way more for us as a crew yep. and a show than, than this did. So, we decided that we wouldn't be doing Emilio any justice by having him on the show during such a monumental episode. So yeah. we're, we're, we're moving that to next week, potentially. We just got to see. And then, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're talking to some other people to get them on because this is all now this rapid acceleration of our wrongness. And thank God for our fans who, who tell us or our family. They, 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 they tell us who cares. They tell us who cares, but then they stop care. Knuckleheads. Yeah. Don't be idiots. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, so lane pipe, which we should have known if we even ever looked fucking ahead. Didn't even think about it. Didn't even look ahead. No. Who's got time? We don't have time. (laughs) And before we get into this, because I don't want to jump ahead too quick. I'm going to tell you that. I am fucking blown away. I watched it last night. I was sick to my stomach. I had to eat a lot of popcorn because I was, I, I brought up more emotion than I thought it would, not just because of what happened, but because I remember this time in our lives yep. and everything that was going on. Yep. And how, and this is what I started the show by saying. This was such a monumental moment, not just for a TV show, not just for the fans in the world that come to see it many months later, but for all of us, which we'll get into. Um, but we'll start that in a minute. So, uh, so Emilio is not going to be on this episode, guys. Uh, it, we, it, it just wasn't fair to him to do that. And, uh, and we have a lot to talk about. So we're going to, well, and that's, and that's, that's, that's right. And Emilio has been busy too. Like the the two of us have, and he said, absolutely not a problem. Well, we'll get him next weekend and can't wait. And this, this, this episode, like we, 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 you shouldn't even have Ryan on for this episode because there's just so much to talk about, you know? Yeah. He's filming Emilio's filming that, uh, the flaming hot Cheetos movie. Do you know about that? No. 
So Eva Longoria, who I worked with and who I absolutely adore and always, and I think she's one of the more she's incredible great. Women. She's great. She's amazing. She's directing a movie based on the guy. Oh no, who created that's right. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Emilio's in that. Yeah, Emilio's in it. I'm not sure what role he's playing, but that guy's story is amazing. He was like, I'm gonna totally butcher the story, but everybody should look it up. It's super motivational. I think he was like a janitor at Fritos or did mm. something at Fritos, was working like, you know, a smaller job and then created the flaming hot thing. And now he's, you know, obviously doing pretty good. Pretty good. Um, but I know it's like a super motivational story. I think his name's Richard or something. I don't I don't know. But Amelia's doing that. Um perfect. And I think that he just wrapped up on that. So we'll, we'll have him in soon. Have lots to say. That'll be great. Yeah. Are you, uh, so you're not going to be back here. I'm in your hometown. I'll be leaving here soon, hopefully next week. And then you'll be coming back in about 10 years. I'm stuck here for a while, buddy boy. <laughs> uh, I know that we have to end in Washington, D.C., but I have no idea when that will be. Yeah, we're we've got some. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. You got Where golf you? courses out there. You playing? Golf? Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You like that golf thing, huh? Oh yeah. I'm pretty good at it too, actually. I know. Rumor, don't you rumor has like it. it. Don't you feel like it takes up a lot of time? Uh, I got nothing but time. I'm playing Frank That's, Sturgis. I'm I not playing know. Howard Hunt. I'm playing Frank Sturgis. I'm not even playing Lena. I'm not even playing Howard's wife. The point is, we're having a great time. But we're a little on the down low right now, a little on the down low. And if I wasn't golfing, I'd be doing something else. And we won't even talk about what that would be. Are you so, golfing with people from the show? No, solo. Wow. You just go out there and golf, huh? Well, there's no one. There's no one. None of my castmates. Do you cast listen to music? Me. Do you like, what no. do you do? I drink just... beer and I play golf and I hit it well. And I chump a chip and I get a bogey, sometimes a double bogey, the odd birdie. What if, somebody, no, man, behind you, what if somebody behind you is like, hurry up, hurry up. Do you like get pushed? From I, I tell them, just go fuck right off, buddy. Right. Keep it down, pal. You don't play want through. Back there. Is that a line? Play through, right? Don't Sometimes we, we had to go through. The, <laughs> we had to go through these three boys, teenagers. They're like 19 or 20, me and two other guys. And uh, they were really slow. And finally, we just run a par five and we just hit and we just fucking hit. They were looking in the orchard for their balls. We just hit. And as we pulled up, I said, son, we'll be playing through. And by the time they could say it sounds good, we played right through and we never got stopped. So wait a second. Else. Let me get this straight. Are you saying that you join on with like two strangers to play? Let me tell you a quick little story. It's like my wife goes, wait a minute. You had another dinner by yourself? Well, well yeah, I go to movies, but I'm a, I'm a yeah, traveling so I, I do everything by myself. Please. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I get to the golf course. I appreciate course. doing things by myself. But go I get to the golf course. They see who I am. Sometimes they recognize me. Sometimes I don't. But I always call ahead and say, can I join a twosome or a threesome? They go, absolutely. I get there and I go, hey, Bob. Hey, Jim. I'm Kim. They go, "Ho, oh, Kim. Jam? No, Kim. Oh, Kim. Kim. Oh, that's a, that's a, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's my name. And then I play, and if they recognize me, we figure it out after four or five holes. And if they don't, I can play 18 in perfect silence, striping wow. the ball, having fun. See you later. Got your own cart and all that. Got my own cart. I don't ride with anybody else. What an interesting thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I do. I, you know, I run every day on my own, but that's because I'm running. Nobody can run and on you my know, back Theo, or something. No, no, that's right. And you know, come on. You're always yeah. listening to music. You know oh, what yeah. this 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 Hudson Valley is like? I didn't. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, I know. Well, it's so beautiful. beautiful. Oh my love it goodness! Up there. Yeah, Woodstock, love we're all. It's all right here. It's stunning. One of my. So I'm, I'm having so a underrated. Upstate New York is super underrated. Yeah. Yeah, I do everything alone, and I uh, I appreciate it. I um, I'm actually avoiding humans more and more as I get older. Um, I don't have. I don't really care for them. <laughs> <laughs> do you miss Benji? I miss Benito, but I can't wait to see. I just got a great video of Juno uh, jumping in one of the lakes. Ben, on the property. I fucking love that dog. Yeah, I was thinking about them because I went I, uh, yesterday. I went to have a, a lunch with our guy, Charles Murray in uh, Eagle you Rock. You did? Yeah, right, right. Literally right next to. So I was oh, with another CM. 
he's great. You know, we both don't like people. So it's kind of great when we're together. Um, we went, you know where we went right down the block from my old place in uh, Eagle Rock. Oh, God. Literally. How much do we love that house? I know. You know that Mexican joint that we went to all the time? Uh, no, we went right across food? the spot to a new vegan spot right across. And, uh -huh. um, you know, oh, you know where we were? Check this mm. out. Mm. You would love this. Literally directly across the street from where we filmed. Uh, I'm going to forget the character. It's coming up soon. Peter Weller played yeah. Bartowski, Bartowski, yeah, played Bartowski. the cop, played the cop. And he had that donut what shop and, and that had sandwich that, shop. Yeah. And it was down the block from my house. Yeah. And remember, we used to film in Eagle Rock all, all the, the time. time. So where we were sitting at our table was directly across from that bakery. Oh, that used to be a burger joint. I don't know what it is now. It's a bakery. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it, no, it's always been. It's it's an old Russian bakery, and uh, that's was his place. Remember, we were always in the bake. Remember, there was a shootout there. We all Hang on a second, there. I'm confused. Are you are you telling me you're shooting in that bakery that he we used? You to guys shot in that bakery, correct? Is that where I you had was lunch? Eating across the street, across from the that street bakery. from that, right? Yeah, and uh, it was really weird to see it because one, I used to live down the block. But two, I remember how excited I was when we were filming there because I was like, I could walk to work. Come on. I used to park in that big Target yeah. Macy's parking lot and just walk to the set. It was fantastic. Isn't that crazy? Wow, your that your house is like right so, up the street. Right up the street. Yeah, that house. Talk about uh, what he offered because remember I was renting it and then, uh, yeah. and then he wanted me to buy it. It was a first AD. And, uh, and I was like, nah, it had like some crack in the foundation or something. I was like, nah. I just saw the house listed for like four times what he asked me to buy it for. And that was like a couple of years ago. That was like 2010, 11. Yeah. So 10 years ago, 12. Wow. Yeah. The house is so much money right now. Um, yeah. So speaking of back in those days, um, here we go. I, I wanna... think it was, I think it was Opie's voice who opened uh, previously on. I think it well, was. This was a really interesting time. I think we should start with this. This was an interesting time. I don't want, I don't know how much we can say. So I'm going to say as much as I think we can say. But between season four and five, we had a bit of a tumultuous time. Would you agree between actors and, yep. and, and the show and, and kind of where we were. And I think a lot of people on both sides of the fence were feeling themselves, meaning that. And what I mean by that was that we wanted something, they wanted something, everybody wanted something. And it was very hard for people to come into an agreement of where we were. We were very aware that the show was the biggest thing on the planet, it felt like, correct? Certainly the biggest thing at FX and that, that they've ever had, that's for sure. Yeah, and if we were in like the top, we were in the top five or six television shows, certainly on cable of all time, right there, yeah. right, right there. And it felt like we were being talked about everywhere and it felt like it had definitely taken over our lives. And I think that we were in this weird position of like, hey, we all love each other, we're all together. What are we doing? And then all of a sudden, like we weren't all together, like things started getting a little weird. And you and I were like, you know, talking, I think it felt like every minute between all this. Um, and then things started to change. And we kind of found out relatively early before we started the season that Opie wasn't going to be around. And that was a major blow to us because I think every one of us, and we've said it on the show a lot, was like, but he's going to be the last man standing. Like he's. This was the beginning. This was the beginning with five, six, and seven when Sutter said, of all you leads, we will let you know at the beginning of the season if you're going to die mm -hmm. that season. Didn't happen with Piney. Didn't happen with many no, others. They didn't let them know. They didn't let them know. No. So now we were told now the new rule was you're going to find out before you start the season. Yeah. And so Ryan got that phone call and uh, we all, you know, we, I've talked about this. I know a bit more about Shakespeare than you do, but Horatio, who Ryan kind of was, I mean, that's, we've talked about this many times. Hamlet's best friend is Horatio. We thought he'd be the only one standing at the end. 
we thought everybody else would be gone somehow yeah. in that Hamlet-esque theme. Yeah. Then as the seasons went on, we realized it was just a theme. It wasn't, you know, it's Sons of Anarchy. And all of a sudden, boom, what? What? Opie's going to be killed. Whoa. Yeah. And, and, and again, take the theme away. It was also he was one of, if not the most popular characters on the show. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like we all had our own. He was lanes. called the Golden Goose. Yeah, we all had our own. We all, we all, sorry to interrupt, but we all had that title. You certainly did. I certainly did. Of being called the Golden Goose at certain times. Yeah. But Ryan was the overall supporting Golden Goose for sure. And well, he, he was, was a big part of the heartbeat. Like he was yeah. the goodness. You know what I mean? Like he was mm -hmm. the one who was fighting against the badness. Yeah. And and I don't believe. Because I, I will say after watching this, this is the end of Jax as we know. This is when Jax becomes different. From here on out, Jax is not a good person. I will stand by that. He gets something snaps in his character. And I believe that it changed everything on this show from here on out. You Can't know, wait. Where... Can't wait to keep discovering what you just said. Yeah. So point is, we we know this is happening and, but we didn't know how we didn't know what we just knew that it was happening. Not in episode five in episode three, which could have been episode 10, could have been 11, could have been right. eight, which is right away. Like episode three is like right away in the grand scheme of starting the season. Cause first one, we know it's, Hey, this is the new season, all the glitz and glamour. Second one usually lays out, What's going to be, here's the big bad, here's what's going on. And then third, you kind of start telling the story and whoa, what? He's gone? Well, we've got Gemma taking it from you know where. With yep. Jimmy. You've got Tig losing his daughter. You've got all of a sudden Pope comes on board. We, what, we're in prison and Opie's dead. All in the first three episodes. Like, all in the first God. three episodes. Holy shit. So I'm going to go to my notes here and I'm going to say that here we go. Um, the episode's already nuts in the beginning. Yeah. Um, because it opens with the prison. You guys, yeah. did you shoot in that real prison that I just yeah. shot in? Yeah. Yeah. You shot in that real prison, right? With the real prisoners there while we were shooting. Yeah, we, we never ran into any of them. Those were all extras. I don't think they were real prisoners. And unfortunately, I think they were all extras, but we were outside. It was a real prison. That's all I know. I just shot there. What happens is uh, there's a part of the prison that they have shut down for filming. That's where we were. Yeah, and and all the, the extras in that scene, a lot of them are actually uh, uh, guys who have- Just got out. Time. Yeah, because there's a big extra agency of people. They just got out. Formerly it was so great to talk yeah. to them. Yeah. Welcome. Well, like, yeah. you know, big fans. They just got out. Yeah, it's amazing. That guy, uh, I forget his name, who has that agency. It's for formerly incarcerated yeah, people. And right. it's a great no, way to right. give we them. We met him. Great guy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's to stop recidivism. So uh, of, of people going back, going back going give back. them a yeah. job. Yeah. So pretty amazing and uh, extremely authentic, obviously, when you're looking at them and what they're doing. So the crew gets saved right away. Uh, Romeo <clears throat> and somebody put something in place for them to be saved, um, which is kind of cool. You guys are coming in and think right away because I had to catch up in my head that Pope's going to make it a problem. The Niners are going to make it a problem for you guys. You know, what's something that you can talk about quick before we get into it, because it's going to come really later is how much of this is Tig's fault. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Just stop right there. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's in here. I, I'll come to it. But why I, I is got, this? Why? Why did I not know this when we were filming? I, I went. This isn't all his fault, but this is Tig's fault. Uh, well, actually, if you really no, think about no. it, it's actually all his fault. Well, I, I guess what I what I what I mean is this story is so large 
that what are we doing there in the first place? What are we doing selling guns? What are we doing with the Irish? What are we doing with the cartel? What are we doing with this? What are we doing yeah. with that? So, but, but to wipe out Pope's daughter in a, in a fit of rage to, to, to get back at uh, the black issue with sons of anarchy, which was turned out to be a lie. Cause and, you and thought kill, they shot clay. That, that's exactly what I mean. Which turned out to be a lie. So he's going after that guy. He's going after my my our boy and wipe out his, his yeah, girlfriend Tory. instead. Tory, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, this this is literally uh, takes fault for sure. So we cut to Gemma in bed with Nero, and they're interrupted by Carla. We talked about this. She's he, Carla seems to be, for lack of a better word, the madam, or you know whatever it is. Um, she seemingly interrupts them every time they're together. I, and I find it interesting that Gemma always wakes up confused. So either confused. sex is either sex is extremely good, and she or she's getting pretty, drugged, by or Nero. she's getting drugged because uh, she always doesn't know where what. what what's with the hickeys? Who made this decision? Well. And it's like no grade 12 or could it make a hickey that big? It's the size of a goddamn. Why is know, there six of them? Grapefruit. I don't know. It looks like they went in a pool with leeches. <laughs> <laughs> they did water well. Put, put that leech from water well right there. Leech out the water. It's silly. It's ridiculous. And, and uncalled for, but whatever. So we're back. Oh, and Nero. Nero's showing off his beautiful spider web tattoo yeah which means he served a lot of time he, yeah. he made sure he got that in in that shot he leans on the yeah. bed right there look at that yeah jimmy had a lot of tattoos in that show put jimmy, on jimmy's so um, freaking good All so right. good so good so we're back at the clubhouse the guys are safe for now romeo wants to meet clay's officially piney he's doing shots he's got the whole thing um and they're they got to go meet, right? We're finding out where the, the guys are in prison. This is the beginning of us all being separated on set, by the way. And here, here it goes. Bobby is the VP. I know he's calling there's the no too, runs the behind the bar. First time Bobby's ever told Clay what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's on. You were sitting right there. You were there that, that day. Clay's got, you know, looking like yeah, doing best planning remember, impersonation. I remember how weird it all felt. I did remember that moment. And I remember this. I say this because I keep talking about how this was a shift for us culturally as a show yeah. and how this was a shift for the show. Yeah. But you have to understand. I liked the show the way it was. I liked Clay being president and having the dynamic against Jax and so you guys I. and your faction and the younger faction and all this and the internal stuff and Gemma trying to manipulate. So did I. We decided that we were going to flip the entire thing on its head. And now it was just, I remember being confused. Like Bobby's coming in and telling people what to do. And Clay is like half dead and like, Half piney, yeah. half clay. Yeah. What's going on here? And if I'm feeling this, what is the audience feeling? Right. Like I was like, this is just weird. Um, what is that on my shirt? Yeah. So it was just a very interesting time. I remember. So now we got Gemma shows up and she's staring at clay, right? Clay's a mess. She's well, staring. you, you, you and him, you and Ronnie found the middle of that frame so beautifully oh, yeah. <laughs> you know there's bobby and Gemma having a conversation and adam arkin who directed this must say you guys just go right you guys get right in the middle we, we tell them who bobby adam is. tell them who adam arkin is adam arkin directed this and he also played uh Zobel. Zobel. yeah yeah which was is this the first one he directed no 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 <laughs> he directed one before this yes he did which it, one? Was very, it was a very famous one where William Lucking grabbed oh, Allie God. on the neck and lifted her up in that Ooh. scene. Yeah. Adam directed that show. So that he's back. Problem. We got him back. Thank, got him back. Thank the Lord. We got thank him back. Because he should have never. Not sure she'd have been back. Not that it was Alan's fault. But no, it wasn't Adam's fault. Alan is his great dad actor, who's one of the best actors to ever live. Alan Arkin. Um, Adam. Uh, great dude. A, really good director, too. Great guy. Really good director. Yeah. He's actually recently on a show with Katie. Yeah. Rebel. 
Rebel. Did they pick that up? They canceled no, that, I think. They canceled it. Yeah, I think they canceled it after like 10 minutes too or something. Like they were three like, shows or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one of those ones where I don't even understand why they make them anymore. They're like, oh, we made it and we're canceled. No, it. let like, it go 13 shows. Let it figure like, itself out. Yeah. See what let fucking it, let asshole show play out. What let it play. People we should run a nine, studio. Let's buy a studio, you and me. For real. There's nine I'm million TV shows on the fucking air. You can't give people a chance to find it i know like it pisses me off i don't even know what all right okay so pope at the prison um again this shows his power theo i'm in the prison i did that episode i completely forgot the pope came to the prison and how the guards are on the take and there's money everywhere pope's basically the warden the sergeant He's everybody. the gangster. He's everybody. If if I did see this episode, which my mind keeps telling me I didn't, I think that I only have seen parts of it, the Opie stuff, because none of this makes sense to me what's happening here in this episode. I don't remember any of it. I did not know Pope was going to be there. When they called Jax away, I was like, oh, shit, are they going to beat him up? I was like, what's happening? We here? got all about it. Yep. So there's Pope. Basically, he tells him the way it is. Jax is in a no-win situation. Pub says this is not a discussion. No. It's not, it's, it's, it's not about you. It's about you learning how to survive. That's all you're going to do here, Jax Teller. And then, he learn says how to the best, and then he says the best line ever. And then Jax goes, I'm not going to war. You're already Pope, in it, son. Yeah, yeah. Fucking A. You're already in it. I had to tell myself that. <laughs> no, I'm already in it. So good. What a Great. fucking line. And he tells him as he's leaving. Oh, fuck, man. Um, okay. So Gemma goes to see the kids. Not happening, right? That, that of course, here we Warpath. go. Warpath. Gemma Warpath. Gemma family, child, grand, grandson's Warpath. Good for Katie that she got to go and work all the time, like on her own with like guest stars and stuff. Like she just comes in, oh, gets yeah, to do her man. thing. Yeah. Gemma Island. Are you in Gemma, Gemma Island this Island. week or not? Like, yeah. come on. What a fucking you. You you had time on Gemma Island. So I did had I. some good time. So did you I had time on Gemma Island. You're on up. Clay Island right now. I'm on Clay Island. I remember me and Ronnie would be the only ones in work. Nigel would be there with us and we'd just be the only ones coming up where it'd be like, all right, we're going to that apartment set again. And juice is doing his laundry and, uh, and, and there he is like that was that was our fucking life. yeah so interesting so okay so taris basically sets her straight and says calm down here's the deal you don't tell me shit taris turning in we know taris becoming Gemma. this whole thing they're playing out so opie starts schooling jacks right well hang on hang on so Gemma's on the work path no visit Oh, yeah. So Tara sees the hickey. Yeah. And she says, wrap, a, hickey. wrap, wrap, wrap a scarf around that. Because yeah. I, I want to come back to this coming up. Yeah. yeah. Get it's so that, funny. Man. She goes, Put it, what are you, what are you in high school? Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll come back to that. Ha ha. Then we go back to Opie. Yeah. And he's basically schooling Jax. And this is really. Oh, they're in blue now. Yeah, they're, they're in blue. They're, they're in blue. Lock up. Everybody's been two in a cell, two in a cell. It just so happens to be Opie and Jax. You know, this is really interesting, right? Because their dynamic has been since the beginning of the show. So five seasons ago, since the beginning, that's his best friend. They're best friends. They've known each other since school. They've been together since kindergarten. And Opie has always been the one to kind of keep him in line, right? And if it wasn't Opie... It was his dad, Piney. Those were the yeah. two, those were the bumpers on the bowling alley for Jax Teller that were like, anytime he went askew, it was like Piney, Opie, Piney, Opie. Piney's gone. So Opie is now the voice of reason, you're right. right? So you're, right. you're watching this episode and there is no thought in your mind. If anything, I'm watching it going, Opie's going to become the new Piney, like even more where he's going to be the guy on the outside, always keeping Jackson in line. Oh, maybe he's not even going to be part of the club. He might be working in some garage, but he's always Jack's going to go to him for advice, right? Like that's now what I just realized in saying this, and you probably don't even know this. In the original, original pilot, mm. which was called forever, Sam Crow, the original show. 
had a different title. It wasn't called Sons of Anarchy. In the original script, no mm -hmm. TIG, no mm -hmm. TIG, mm -hmm. before Scott Glenn was cast as Clay, there was a character. I would love to get my hands on this. Go. He was, he was, I got to find it somewhere. He was, he was an older ex, like an older ex member of the club who uh -huh. was sober, who was sober, who didn't wear the patch anymore, but worked in some garage and Jax would go see him to get mentored. And he was really good friends with his dad. Well, I wonder if that was, what's his name? I wonder if that was the kid whose dad was so close with John Teller yeah. and the dad kind of died and we all didn't know yeah. how he died. I wonder if it was him. Well, he, well, what I think happened is, so this character was originally in the original pilot. I got to find out what his name was, but Jax would go see him, like yeah, right I'll out to you. see him. I'll bet you. And he was friends with, his, with John Teller and he would, he would advise him. Right. And then ultimately when the entire show changed, I think that parts of that character became Piney, parts of it became uh, Opie, parts yeah, of it be. became the, the guy who died, who fixed his bike. And they basically took this one character and broke it into different pieces, right? Which happens a lot. Um, but now we're losing any mentor that Jax yeah. has. N Nero kind of becomes a little of that later, I think, right? Or yeah. somebody. But, but we, Opie's sitting there. He's schooling Jax. He's telling him. And we realized that Jax didn't tell the crew the whole story. He doesn't tell them that Pope wants... Yeah, I just yeah. said nice, nice little lie to Tig, Chibs, and Opie. Yeah. Big Which lie. Is, why, why do you think he lied? He's trying to figure it out. Mm. He's, he's in such a pickle. By the way, um, I, I just remembered that I lost a scene in this, in this episode. Oh, which one? Uh, it's, it's back. It, it's completely gone just before the big, the big scrap coming up in, in, the, in the prison yard. Well, you know, I'll wait till we get there. Keep going. All right, but it didn't happen yet. It hasn't come up yet. Coming up. Okay, tell me when it is because I love scenes that were cut. You filmed it. We did. Okay, good. So the crew, the crew now goes to talk to Galindo. Bobby is taking charge completely. Boy, is he ever to to Louis and to to Romeo? Right? Is Romeo? Yep. Even, you know, it wasn't there. Just Louis, wasn't it? Just Louis. No, we we didn't. Treo a lot didn't like show up. Like not show up. I don't mean that. Like he a lot of times he was working so much. That so busy bring, that guy you would bring yeah. benito in and yeah. not have Romeo. Correct. um and it would be like his underboss just came to kind of talk yeah um juice being clay's driver uh i was full jaw acting i hate watching myself back in the day when i didn't know how to act um, well now that, now that you pointed it out a little bit but it wasn't too bad <laughs> it was pretty bad no it wasn't uh, too bad but it's really it's a good, it's a good scene though. Really good scene. Yeah. He wants Gemma back and he's like, no, basically. Uh, no, no, I don't know. I'm and not then he goes, come on, this. please juice. It's killing me. And I thought everything's killing you. You look like you're dead anyway. You. You're dying. Yeah. Um, but those, those scenes are really fun, you know, in the, in the vans when you do them. Cause it's like, you got one camera here. All right. We're going to shoot it this way. You got one camera here. We're going to shoot it this way. You got three takes. Okay. Let's move on. And that's it. But yeah, I was, uh, but this is when I was trying to bring back some semblance of comedy in the show because I knew how heavy they were. And then like, uh, it, it was just, this was starting to establish the relationship with Juice and Clay. Yeah. So Gemma goes to see Wendy. And again, we start realizing how nefarious and evil Gemma is. I just love the way Drea crosses her legs. The way she crosses her legs, it's like no one's gonna fuck with you. No, no she's one's gonna. Badass. She's a bad ass, and she's, she's a badass. brilliant actor. And when she yeah. crosses her legs like that, it's like you know some guys they do this. They cross their arms. You know, okay, what? Very insecure. Stop crossing your arms. Uncross them and just be in it. Just be real. But Drea, man, when she crosses her legs like that, like a guy, like a sheriff, she's like, uh, uh. What do you got? I just me? read a book on body language called "What Everybody Is Saying." Uh, by this former CIA anal uh, analyst. Yeah. And um, the body tells so much, right? Tells everything, actually. Hands, just, body, the whole thing. Really helpful for acting, by the way, but uh, really, really helpful for life in general. But one of the things that I thought was interesting that I learned in that was I always was told 
crossing your arms was you're being uh, shut off. Shut down. Shut, shut down. Yeah, yeah, not true, by the way. Mm. It's just a, a really comfortable pose. Mm. What he said was in the book that most people uh, will cross their arms because it's way more comfortable than putting your arms to your side. Mm. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Just a fun fact. After reading that, that book. Very um, interesting. You know, why? you know, why a lot of hockey coaches have their arms crossed behind the bench because it's fucking freezing. Well, that's another thing. It keeps you warm. Too. It keeps you a little bit warmer. Yeah. 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 I'm actually. Uh, so Gemma's playing a very wicked game right here. With, I mean, Gemma's up to. So I, much it's just shit. so annoying, too. It's so I annoying. It. It's so annoying. It's so wrong. I hate it. And then and then we go to Jackson Opie having this combo and the guard asking, fuck that guard, man. I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Um, I know we have big stuff coming up with him later, but he's been in a ton of shit, right? Okay, where are you jumping to now? Son? No, it's the next thing. Jackson Opie having the combo and the guard walks into the prison. It's right okay, after great. Tara. Right after Wayne. Okay, keep going. So yeah, he's keep going. Jax tells him the truth. He tells him everything. Okay. And we see Jack's breaking a little, right? Like he's fucked up. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what to do. And I'm going to tell you something that I noticed in this episode. In that scene, anybody who's watching that scene, if not go back, watch Opie make the decision in his head that it's going to be him. Okay, just hang on a second. Just, just hang on a second. Uh, okay, is that where we are? Yeah. Have we bypassed the whole big fight in prison? We're not there yet. Okay. Okay, keep going. So, did we? Wait, did we? No. Oh, fuck, we did. Sorry. I, you know, listen, this is why I do you. I need to go and do what you do where you're on the paper. <laughs> you're right. All right. Listen, hey, fuck you because you're right because I was wrong. I like being right. Yeah, well, good good luck because that's the first one. That's on. the first one. All right, so let's okay, just go the to the big brawl. Go the to big the brawl. big brawl. Go. Let's back. go there. This is where I. This is where I lost the scene. This is where Tommy okay, back. back in the day, Tommy came up to me on the bench and was consoling me and talking about Dawn and talking about how I was and talking about you're gonna be all right and I'm all fucked up. And then Charlie came over and said, here we go, get ready. We're going to start the fucking fight. So that was, that was pulled out. Didn't have time for that. Wait, yeah. go back yeah. to that. So right after the Wendy scene, the big brawl is about to go down where everybody's hitting each other and beating each other up in the yard. Yeah. And, and that's right. And that's, that's all shown. And I also want to say in there that they used very little of that scene. We filmed that fight scene out in that courtyard all day and they used just snippets of it and it was freaking hot i'm not complaining the stunt guys were great but they they used you could tell that they were time constrained what part of your scene got cut all of it you can barely see my hair my right ear basically going down to bite the guy like which was what tig did all the time that's anyway tig did got that's bit all, and bit got but, bit and bit people that's all that's all the show tommy i don't even i think tommy had one punch ryan i don't even think we saw Charlie a bit took on the big guy and then it's over. We, we, that that big guy we? used to work with me. Did he? When I was a waiter in a restaurant and a bar back and a bartender at this uh, place in LA, he was the security guard. So, yeah, well, there he was. And he was, he's a, he's a big giant. as an oak tree. He's giant. a giant. So I have so many questions about this. So you have this big brawl. What what did Tig say on the scene they cut? Is it just the action stuff or did you say something? Just before the brawl, Tig mm -hmm. is at a picnic bench and we have a whole scene with Tommy and me talking about Dawn, talking about how I feel, talking about what a drag, talking about are you going to be okay, brother? And, that what, kind of and stuff. what was Tig like lost? Lost, yeah, just like it was horrible. Did and he now, ever like say like this is all my fault or he's just... I don't remember. I don't remember. I just remember that we had a beautiful scene and I'm, I probably I probably said something about we wouldn't be here uh, if, if, if I would have done that or we shouldn't be here or I'm sure I there, was some, cut scenes. there was something like that gone. Yeah. Some of the peeps have been showing some pretty cool like that. Was, there was it ever a, on the DVD that cut scene or it just I have no idea. Mm. 
there was one a couple of weeks ago where I guess I forgot they were going to cremate Dawn and Gemma and Chucky had a beautiful little scene where there was a broken uh, China plate and Chucky was told by Gemma, where are you going? Gemma said, we're going to go, pre Dawn's going to be cremated. And Chucky didn't know. And he was completely like, remember he had that nice little oh, moment. Oh yeah, he had a his, thing for her. A little thing for her. And he got very emotional and he put this cracked plate inside and he put that inside where, where uh, she was going to be cremated. Oh, that's was cool. cremated. So that was all that didn't make it. There's so many scenes that don't make it right. But anyway, um, then Charlie, so comes then over. you guys go into lockdown and <clears throat> completely uncalled for. I know probably a lot of people loved it, but um, they just show you guys all naked. Well, and let me just say, there's a, there's a very funny story there where <laughs> there's, you know, the lights are pretty low and, and we got, you know, we got Ryan, Charlie, Kim, and Tommy in that order. We got my, my other four buddies on the other side. It's very mm -hmm. dark, a lot of prison guards. And we are doing more push-ups, more, more doing more crunches, push-ups. Do you remember yeah. if it was morning or night? Middle of the afternoon. Middle you of the afternoon. Were, you guys were all flexing. And we were all sweating and flexing and sweating and flexing. Cock socks were falling and they you were just on. just had socks on, right? Yeah, little cock, cock, socks. cock socks on, off, on, off, you know. But what I remember the most, and I wish Tommy was here right now, he would concur. I just turned around to talk to him and his back was to me. And out of nowhere, he just went poof. Like he didn't see me coming. He was stretching his, and he punched me right in the face. Wow. Punched me right in the face. I went, fuck, man. He goes, Cutsy, Cutsy. I go, what are, you, what are you doing? I'm just flexing. I was flexing, flexing. He flexed me right in the jaw. I remember people don't realize like I'm in, in the film I'm in now. I'm uh, I was just telling you I'm naked again. And it's really interesting, right? Because you, you do the whole, uh, we call it a cock suck. I'm sure there's a more, uh, it's a sock. It's a for sock. Your cock. Okay. So that, <laughs> that's why it's called a cock suck. What's your point? <laughs> like the red hot chili peppers. Yeah. And, um, and basically, you know, you just, it, it, it's, that's it. That's it. So here you are in this big room with all these people, super sweaty, super hot. Well, super... And, and of course, Michelle, who is your makeup artist and mine. Yeah. Michelle uh, Garvin, shout out. Yeah, Michelle. God, I miss her. Anyway, mm -hmm. she, they, we were all being touched outside in this little area and then no one was allowed in because <laughs> we all had, you know, gowns on. And then we would drop the gowns, drop prow, get in there, get in line. Okay, the camera's going to be just going, okay, here we go. Ass shot, ass shot. Anyway, let's go. Come on. It's all hot. We, so I it's get ass shots all around. I do think that the scene was uncalled for, but okay. It's a little strange. Um, Wendy and Tara scene, Gemma plays everyone. Tara basically tells her, I know what the fuck you're doing. I know what's going on. Cut the shit. Um, and uh, basically we now know. I got to say, it just, maybe it's me. Tell me it's me. I don't fucking care. You know me. Bit soap opera, yeah. just a bit soap opera in here. It's just that the writing was a bit, and, well, and I don't mean that in a bad what's way. The point? But why, 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 you know, like fuck off. I guess Tara, here's, my, here's my question: What's the point of it? Is it just to show Gemma, like Tara and Gemma, separation? Is it to bring Wendy back into the fold? Like, what's the point? What's the yeah. point? Yeah, 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 and then and then. This is one where Wendy and Tara together, right? And Tara goes, she calls her an ex junkie yep. bike biker yep. whore. Yep. Like that's that's pure Kurt Sutter right there. All right, so that that's that. Okay. Let's, so let's get back to the boys. Now the boys are in blue. Now they're well, in here blue. Here we go. Tell because I jumped the gun before. You jumped the gun just a bit, but now we're in blue. And I, I I gotta say, so it's Jackson Opie. Yep. And I said, you know, and the guard comes in who's fucking great. He's fucking great. God, was he freaking good. So he you tells hated him from the second he walked in. Yeah. That's either really good acting or you're an asshole and you know how to act. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah, it's one or the other. We're yeah, not going to get know. to I don't know, know him well enough to know. To know? We don't know. I know that he's been in a bunch of shit. But fuck, it, he was the guy. So he tells those boys what's going to happen. Now, you know what I noticed? What? I noticed that Opie, after the guard leaves, he stays laying down for yep. a long time. It's almost as if Opie's thinking, I don't know, 
it's too early to plan. Oh, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm just saying that Ryan Hurst as Opie, there was, there was no more trying anymore. It, it just, uh, Oh, he won. I mean, you want to, there is a clear change in playing the character in this episode. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm not saying it didn't work, but there is a clear oh God, change because yeah. it worked amazingly. But there is a clear change in the way he was playing Opie in this episode. And this and, is all all the truths. Jax is giving him all the truths. Yeah. And he makes the choice. You see him make the choice. It's when he sits up in the bed. He makes a choice. He puts his hair yeah. back like he was doing all the time, yes. you know, the yes. lion meme, and he puts okay. it back and you can tell in his eyes, he looks at him that it's, a, that he knows I'm, I'm doing this. And especially when he says, I miss your old man. And he's like, yeah, me too. All the anger is gone from him. He has nothing left. He's gone. And he makes the decision after he's he got- tells him everything. Tells him everything about the letters. Opie pins Jackson, asks him why he didn't let him kill Clay. That's this is kind of like his last burst of like trying to set Jack straight and let him know some things. Yeah. And then he tells him everything. He tells him about Romeo. Opie tells him he made the wrong choice. This is all shit Jax has to live with from here on out. Yeah. So we're back to General Hospital. Tara gives paperwork to to work the prison, tells Gemma she knows, uh, tells, and then, but I will say, even in this General Hospital soap opera storyline, Tara does give fucking Gemma one of the greatest lines ever. You know what line? Well, well, first of all, go ahead. Say the line. What is it? I'm sure I wrote it She goes, are you going to kill me, sweetheart? Oh, yeah. yeah. She goes, I'm not. But my husband might. Yeah, no, that's great. That is, and and this is this is also where I <laughs> this is also where I wrote down that that scarf that Gemma had around her neck. Yeah, it was the size of a towel. It was like it was the size <laughs> like she, she just came out of a sauna. Like she was talking, at a sauna. Like it's like the the writers went. Let's make sure that the audience understands that we've covered up the hickey now with a scarf. Yeah. Like, they're like, you don't know. Oh, there's no scar sunset. Do you have a bed sheet? Yeah, there's yeah. a bed sheet over there. Just throw the bed sheet on. It's a fitted one. Don't worry about it. We won't yeah. see it. Yeah. Yeah. So now, have we have we gone over juicy pants running out with Carla? I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. All right, keep going. So Diosa scene right now. Clay and Jacks and I mean Clay and Juice enter. Okay, good. And again, Clay goes back to being Clay, right? You know, uh, looking around and kind of doing his thing. And Juice does not want to be there. This is like really, you know, whatever. Again, we're establishing their relationship. And that's all we see. For now, all we see is that opening, right, of them. Um, Okay. We cut back to Jax. You can, t- you can tell Jax is basically thinking in his head, he's going to make the sacrifice. That's kind of what we go back to really quick, where the look on Jax's face is like, no, 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 no. I, I can't figure out who's going to do it. I'm going to do it. Which, by the way, still keeps Tig in prison for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess the whole point of Pope's mentality was like, keep taking prison and ultimately he'd become like an auto type character. Right. Uh, sorry. Say that one more he, time. Like Tig would become you're, like an you're auto. All, you're all, you're all over the no, map. No, 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 no. I'm just saying you. when Jax is going to make this sacrifice, you could tell in his eyes because we cut away from Diosa for a minute to go back to Jax. Uh-huh. And then we go back to Diosa. But what right. I'm asking you is, Pope's mentality of keeping Tig in prison is just so he could torture him whenever he wants, right? Do you know what? This is a good time to talk about it. Yeah. I think Tig was next. After Opie. I think Tig was going to be next. Well, you and I can talk about later. I don't know when those episodes come, but there was a moment where you almost were supposed to die. I'm supposed to die a million times. Just as part of the but story. For real, there was like a conversation. That's coming up. That's, uh, so my point is, at the beginning of this season, five, for whatever reason, it was time to start killing all the leads. 
It's just the way it's going to go. I remember that. It's the way it's going to go. So who are we going to go? Let's, let's take, as you just said earlier, you know, the Golden Goose, the, the, one of the favorite, the, he was the, the, the good heartbeat of the SOA. Let's mm -hmm. start with him. Shocker. And so I'm not sure that he knew exactly who was going to be next, but they were setting Tig up to rot in prison, to maybe stay in prison, and then maybe eight episodes in. Who knows? But I was really ready to go, and that whole thing stopped and changed, and we were going to figure something else out. So this is yes. also a time on television. I want to break for a second and say this is also a time on television where the way to get eyes was to do shocking shit yeah. and and uh obviously we shocked everyone with Gemma season two opener right burning of the back season one and sometimes you become drunk on your own way of doing things and what happened was and and again this goes back to the uh vibe of all of us between season four and five we started to feel and you could correct me if I'm wrong that the characters, why everybody was tuning in, were starting to become maybe not as appreciated. Like, we don't need you, like, and we could just start killing people, but people are still going to watch the show. That was the thought. And we were like, well, maybe, but we're kind of the ones that made the show, right? Like, there was yeah. that thought process of, yeah, the Reaper is really important, but let's not discount Tig, Juice, Opie, Piney, Clay. I think that there was a moment there where everyone said because Kurt was running the show and he knew he wanted three more seasons, we were going to get them five, six, and seven. That was it. Yeah, That's all knew. he had in his head. We were going to do 39 more shows. And I really, I really truly believe that with the success of that show, and it's not about degrees of degrees of who's better or worse, mm -hmm. or we were all a team. And so we all thought teamwork is going to be the best way to negotiate, the best way to come to work, best way to stay together till the end or until we're killed, like mm. Opie was. And I think I think that the top brass really felt that they could they could do this show with Charlie, or they could do the show with Charlie and Gemma, or they with could do Gemma, the show with, with Gemma, Gemma and, and Clay. Yeah, the thought yeah. was that you can do the show with those you know, two, and you don't need yeah, anyone else. And, and we don't really need anyone else. I'm not saying that that's really what happened, and I know you're not either. No, but it got very. Oh, we're going to do that when Opie died. Oh, okay. This really will be the beginning of the end then yeah. of we're all of us. You just don't know what season. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, um, that was a really weird feeling to have as an employer, a, an employee of a company, right? Because it was like, well, wait a second. Am I just going to start losing all my friends and, and the people that made this the way it is? And because we did so much offset, right? Like all that we summer. were like, you know, we hung were out all the time, all the time, rode together, ate, broke bread. Yeah. And now you're going to start losing that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. No, it, we started losing it big time. Uh, yeah. And, and we and we started like freaking out a little. And um, and that was it. Right. And it, And again, it became. It, became, it felt like, and I'll be the one to say, because I don't give a fuck, is um, it felt like it was like there was a less care for all of us and like what got us to where we were, right? Of like, no, 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 make no mistake. Our, us and our relationship of us being like family is why people are tuning in with the writing, with the Reaper and with the storyline. But the way we are, the way we all love each other and how much we protect fiercely protect this reaper crew yeah. that we've created. And now all of a sudden we're going to start losing people. And I, and I think that what it was, was if it, it just felt like it was, um, it was a scary time because we just didn't know. And we didn't want to lose our friends. And we also didn't want to get killed off and we didn't know. So with Opie, I think that with Ryan, wow. It wasn't, it was, it was way more symbolic than just Opie, which we'll get to in a minute. This, it was, it was Ryan too. Th that, that is so right. And what this, 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 if we didn't know before we were stamped with it on our chest, all of us, right? Here. This is called a business. This show is a show business. business. It's called show business. And from that moment on, from the death of Opie on, it was a business. It, it was a business That's and so you and me perfect. a couple of weeks from now we're going to talk about it when we get opium whenever that is might be a year from who knows ryan's so fucking swamped but i'm telling you 
you and I are going to tell the story of that camping outing that we all had mm -hmm. to say goodbye to the first true, true lead. And that's no disrespect to the other guys and girls who've, who we've lost on this show. But Ryan was the beginning of the dinosaurs, the big timber, the big redwoods falling in the California yeah. forest. Of the really tight of the real. That's right. And so now from now on, it's called, you know what, peeps, this is called a business. Yeah, and, and get used to it. Like so while you thought this was like this fun summer yeah, camp, get used to we'd it. always film yeah. in the summer and we were having fun. Fun's over. Like we were still gonna have fun, but it's a fucking business. Yeah. So get used to it. So yeah, wait, till, wait till we talk about six and seven seasons. Yeah. Anyway, here we are. All right, keep, so keep we're going. back to Diosa. Yeah. And and of course, this is when Juice comes out with his shirt half on and he sees Gemma and Gemma walks so, in. I got a question for you. Yeah. Did you not shoot something with? No. With, oh. Well, let me. There think. Wasn't, let me wasn't think. there a little scene think. where you walked in and she went, "So do you want to get naked? Do you want?" And you went, "Well, it's not really necessary." Or shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't we? Or maybe maybe that's coming yeah. up. Yeah. No, I think there is. I think there was. Maybe I, that's I, coming up. Maybe you do it again. No, I think there's either something comes up with her and I again. She, she comes to you and starts tickling you and you go, oh, there's no need. To, well, you know, should we, couldn't we just, or am I making this? Maybe I dreamt it. No, you're not dreaming. It's something happened because I know when, remember when in, in the prior scene to this, she's walking me in the back and I'm like, Carly, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah. What are we doing here? Come and on. What are we doing? And then yeah, you're coming, yeah. of course, because you're such a sexy motherfucker. You got to have the shirt kind of half off. Or yeah. half on. I was working out too much to not. You were working out so much. On. Yeah, I had to do some. And then when he sees Gemma, he's like, Clay, he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Now she comes running back. And um, I don't, I I'm I'm sadly not gonna remember the girl's name who's in Ashley that. Tisdale. Thank you. She's a super famous Disney actress. Well, she's a she's a singer, dancer, voiceover. She's beautiful. Who got her to do a nice little guest? She did two episodes. Apparently was a big fan of the show. Okay. Apparently was a big fan of the show. Kurt, you know, liked to do that at times, right? Put her on. It's always good for her. I just remember there was a lot of paparazzi there at the time. A lot of paparazzi. A lot of paparazzi. A lot she, of TMZ. A lot of TMZ. She was on the show. Gemma beats the snot out of her. Clay is enjoying the shit out of it. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah, and and, and, and I, sorry, and I and I did say <laughs> like Gemma's punching her out, and Clay has this smirk on his face. And I said, I said in here, Theo, I said that's probably the best day on set for Perlman in quite some time. Well, he's got his shoes and socks off. He's got those big, big lug feet airing out. Big lug feet, and his and his former wife, even though he's still married to Gemma, is punching the crap out of his chick. He's ah, there's my girl. That's right. There's my That's exactly. And he's just doing his thing. Loving Jimmy, it. And, Jimmy and I come running in. So here we go, bud. We go back to the prison. Jack's trying to just say that we decide our faith. Nobody tells us what to do. Now, for me as an audience member, I'm going, well, what does that mean? What's he going to do? Like, what, what, what is it? What are you going to do? You can't break out. Like, what are you going to do? Um, but he's like, nobody tells us what we do. And you guys are all in that room. Now, I was there that night. I, I remember you guys filming all this. Well, don't give it away as to I'm why not. you were there. Because it's a special story. Yes. But that whole night in that prison, which was built right in the front of our stages. Um, and sometimes tarped yeah, we were, for night. We were on our lot. We were on our yeah, lot. We were on our lot. Uh, on our lot. Sometimes tarped for night, right? If it was daytime. Yeah. Yeah. And you and when you would walk in that door from outside, it would be pitch black in there. Couldn't even yeah. see your hand in front of your face. And um, he basically says, I'm going to do this. You know, uh, we, we make our own decision. And then Opie, out of nowhere, headbutts this guard. He's made the choice. He's going in the box. Well, and I just wonder what it was like. For the audience this is 2012 fuck me it's tuesday night it's at 10 48 at night your Nine time zone ago. and there's no way everyone's thinking tig's got to be the guy 
100%. Maybe Chibs. Maybe Jax is going to give himself up and then he doesn't die somehow because he's. Or maybe somebody, maybe like, maybe somebody goes, You're bailed out. Like, you guys got to go. Stay Something. by the bell. Yeah. But when, when, when Opie headbutts that guard and gets pulled in, and before the three of us, and we're yelling and screaming, me but and Chibs. And then Chibs he says are, that line. And then he says that line. He says it like under his breath, like almost muddled. He looks at him and he goes, I got this. I got this. Are you fucking kidding me? It's one of the most iconic lines of our entire seven seasons. I got this. People could never shake that line. He looks at him with like this kind of half smile. I got this. They start bringing everyone in the box. And still, you're still sitting there going, no, it's going to be, it's fine. Like, it, again, he's okay. Like, this is okay. Couple of hits happen, pipe to the face. It's I don't okay. know. I don't know if you, if you noticed. You Rossi. can't take, can't look. Thank you. Take, can't look. I literally couldn't look. You couldn't look? I refused to watch what, what I was responsible. Was. Yeah, no, I, I didn't want to. And Adam Markin saw me do it and he just went, you're, and I went, yeah, I can't. He goes, perfect. And I, he never saw my face when he died. You know, I just couldn't, couldn't face it. No, you can not look. We're and, all there now. What people, and we'll get, we'll get to this. One, minute, more, one, we're one more thing and then I'll let you tell, uh, sorry, one more thing. I, and I got it. And people know this. You certainly do. But when Thomas Flanagan starts mm -hmm. to scream from the bowels of his gut mm -hmm. banging on the glass i and and hanam is pounding on that glass so hard i thought he was gonna break his hand it didn't take much for me not to look the pain from what those two boys were doing um was was palpable i felt it i heard it it was it was stunning anyway go ahead can i ask a question on how you guys film that because we you and i know this and the audience doesn't so there was a lot of filming on you guys outside the glass. Did Opie and them mime it for you on that? Did they mime or was there no one there? Were you guys acting to nothing or were you acting to Opie and them doing the scene? We, 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 were, we were watching it happen. We were, we were watching it happen. In other words, a camera was in a position of filming the fight they didn't know how they were going to edit it yet, but there was a camera filming the fight and there was a fucking camera right on the three of us, even though my back oh, was shit. Camera. Okay. So they filmed it at the same time. That's two unusual. cameras. Oh yeah. That's no, unusual. No, well, we had a lot of two camera stuff going on, but not for that stuff. That was unusual for such a big scene, but it was big enough to put a camera hidden, do the whole fight and put another camera that we could see us. So, but that's it was what, happening. That's why it was so good. It, it, it was totally happening. Because usually in filming, you know, this is they got to film the fight the whole time with two cameras, then they'll turn everything around. Oh, no, they and they did. They I don't want to get I don't want to confuse you. They did. But for the first time to, to film us, they did the fight so we could see it. So we actually were reacting when the camera was on us. And then we got rid of us and just did a couple of cameras of the fight. And we weren't on. And then when they were all done with their close-ups, forget about Ryan for a second. Then they put a camera just through the glass watching Tommy and Charlie go nuts. And they did the fight behind the camera because we knew what the fight was already. And then, of course, and then you can take over. But basically, when it was time to turn the camera around and us three were not in the shot at all, and it was going to be Opie's last shot when he goes down to the knees when he goes to his knees and takes the last shot, whatever that is mm -hmm. and he looks up at the glass to see the three of us mm -hmm. tell the audience what we did well uh, i i i have to first say that that is the big credit and shout out to the stunt team to everyone <laughs> who uh organized how it was going to be done meaning that Whoever choreographed the fight scene, it's great. Which probably Norris, right? Is it's great. Is, uh, is let him get in a few shots, give the audience hope. Then they grab him. The big guy grabs him, 
he gets hit first in the head and you go, oh shit, this isn't good, right? This is mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. And then he drops to the knee, both knees, looks up at Jax. And just to tell the people who are listening and watching is what in the, in the scene that you're seeing on television, Tig, Chibs, Jax are behind that glass. That's who's in the scene on TV. In real life, in the life of us as people, as the really tight unit that we were, Bobby and I were also added to that. And all the prospects came. DL. DL came. Prospects. Um, all the everybody. prospects were there. Perlman was doing something else. He couldn't show up yeah, that yeah, night. I don't think he all. was there. Everyone was there. We were all there. I mean, and so from the other side of grass, glass, when Ryan looks up, can you imagine this and action? They snuck us in and he looks up at the glass, completely shelled blood, last shot. And he's looking up and there was 12 of us behind the glass. Mm -hmm. And that's what he saw. Oh God. I'm it's like tearing up going, right now. I couldn't going, stop crying. I remember I, it's so funny that it just impacted me now. I couldn't stop crying when it happened. Right. Because I it, come on. It was come on. We, we watched him do that look. I wasn't even working. I, I remember no, riding, riding all, up on my motorcycle. In. I came in for yours. Everyone came in. Yeah, when you, everybody came in for everybody. Talk about that. Enjoy but the we pie. Were so tight. And when he did that and he looked up, I remember being so heartbroken. I was so in juice, like in juice mode. And everything was in, impacting me. And I remember us all looking at each other. And you guys were in costume. You guys were like in the scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, again, the way it plays, they added that noise in Foley of that steel hitting his head. Um, probably one of the most brutal things I've heard. I, I still looked away, even last night. Um, yeah. And shattered. Uh, Shattered his head. It, it shattered his head. There was there's no like if you're if you're if you have half a brain, you go, he's dead. Like there was no coming back from it, right? Yeah. You knew that it was it. And then to solidify it, they showed Jax's face. Well, and I just wrote down, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm not sure I've ever seen that look on Charlie slash Jax's face ever before or ever after. Never. That look. It's something you can never, nor should you ever plan anything when you act. But that was right from the heart. That fully was broken. A fully fucking broken. Fully broken. And, and the truth is that fully broken earns us so much later. Not just well, in this episode, but no later. Like he's and, gone. And then we continue yeah. down the hallway. And you said it earlier, Rossi, and you're right. This man called Jax Teller will be forever changed. This never is never the same. It's never the same. And I got to tell you, he's walking down. Me. Go ahead. No, I was just saying he's walking down the hallway yep. with that guard who we've yep. been given so many kudos to. Yep. And he, and he and he doesn't stop walking. He just goes, I'm getting released. And when I do, I'm going to find out who you are and where you live. And then I'm going to kill you. Very simple. It was just simple. You're and dead. That guard, that guard knew. Oh, he's done. He's, he, he, better, he better move to freaking Saskatchewan yeah. up where the bugs come. And no. Charlie, would he hates bugs. So he's not going to go up there and get them. No. Because we will find him. But here, this is where I knew that the, it, that the scene impacted me a lot. I got mad when they cut to Gemma and Nero. I was like, I don't fucking need to see them. I was like, get back. to like, care. I don't fucking care. I was like, the I only care. reason why they would do that, Rossi, and I wrote this down. It's because the entire world of SOA watchers, they all need to smoke a big fat doobie if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah. Like Gemma was. They're all going, stop, stop, stop. Hang on. Roll, roll. Light roll, it. Mm. Let like, me smoke. Let me smoke. But I was literally like, I don't fuck. It almost made me like resentful of them. I was like, get them off the fucking screen. I don't care. Go back to Jack's. <laughs> Go back to everyone. I want to see them. I want to. I want to be with them. I feel like I'm. I'm. I'm in pain. Like I need to be with them. And then I couldn't agree more. Then we go to Jack's in this meeting with Pope. And this is 
This is an interesting turn for the audience because I know it was a really interesting turn for me is he plays this where he needs TIG outside, which is, by the way, just really fucking good writing to get TIG out. Yeah. Um, and then he says a line, Pope, that I will never forget. I actually wrote it down for myself. Pain will take you to the next level. It's what makes players into kings, right? Yeah. Um, beautiful line. It's a beautiful line and it's a good move there because, you know, this adds a nice color to Tig's character, right? Coming up. Um, having, well, having well, that. and I got to tell you, the audience is watching this, the millions around the world, they're going like, this is going to play so beautifully at the end of this season mm. when we get to show 13. Yeah. It's going to play into everything that we're about to witness and be uh, a part of. But yeah, Jax gets Tig out. So he calls Tara. We get into this montage sequence. Um, he doesn't tell her. Then the cops come in, and this is we're in the montage now. The cops come in and bust Diosa. Why is that? Do we know who did that? Well, and 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 can I just I just got to say, hang on one second, because um, it looks like Pope. First of all, Pope is basically running that prison, and, and that's just kind of fucking crazy. And 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 Jax brings something up about can you stop the home invasions? And yes. and and Thank Pope you. went, Pope went, it's not, not me. Us. Not it's us. Not, not us. And he goes, Well, then it must be the, the Niners. And Pope goes, better fucking not be. Better not be. So so you realize that Pope isn't doing those, right? No, that's a big yeah, that's yeah. a big part. Yeah. Big part. And then as so you can said, I the ask you a question, what who then who sends the cops to Diosa? Do we know yet? I don't have a fucking clue. Clay? Is it Clay? Clay wouldn't have the, the, the balls to send cops to. Why would he do that? Clay can well, barely put maybe, oxygen Maybe in we'll nose. find out. Well, we better find out. But didn't you find it weird, Rossi, where the, the song starts and the montage, as you said, starts to begin and then boom, it, it stops. stops. I know. That's the the we never do that in shows. We never do that. Usually when the song starts, the show's over. You know it's the beginning of the end of that show. That's right. Not this one. Boom. Because it's over. Now the song ends and we go back to Jax telling Tig to give us a minute, which, by the way, Tig just listened when he said that. Like, give us a minute for him and Chibs. What was the point of that? Why, why do you think he listened so easily? You mean, you mean... Tig could hear what Chibs and Jax were no, saying? No, why do you think Tig, Tig w it, it didn't even question it? Is it because Chibs is the new... Uh... No, because Tig... Opie's dead. Mm. Because of Tig. Mm. Opie's dead. Jax could say, go put a bullet in two of those... He, he would do that. That's right. He's a bruised, beaten up dog right now. That, that is loved or not loved or loved or not loved. And right now is not the time to hang on. I want to stay. Or, no, 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 no. Whatever Jack says uh, Tig's going to do. It's probably the weakest he's probably felt as a character in the entire seven season. hundred percent. Right, this right is the weakest I've ever seen Tig, the weakest yeah. you've ever played him. I think that's so, right. So then Chibs, he tells Chibs what's up. He basically tells him everything. Jax tells him, you know, what the situation is. And didn't you feel Theo? that this is going to be maybe the beginning of a relationship between Chibs and, and, and Jax, meaning that Chibs is the new Sergeant at arms. Yes. Um, Bobby's the VP, but Bobby's, you know, but Chibs becomes the new guy. He's always been Jackie boy, Jackie boy, Jackie boy, but it was always clay. Clay's yes. out. I, yeah, I he think, has to I, become like the emotional support. Yeah. Team. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, so he has to become the emotional support to him. And that starts those fucking rooftop talks that we'll get to later, which was like <laughs> two hours, which I can't stand, but whatever. So you should, you should have been in them with me and I didn't talk. I mean, that oh was my fucking God. brutal. So he calls takeover. Yeah. This is really important to me because um, you're neutered. Tig's neutered. Yeah. He's finished. At this point. Yeah. But he gets a second life at this moment, right? He gets a lifeline. Um, you played him so confused at this point, like like almost like really lost. And I'm really interested 
to now follow the journey different. Cause I don't think at the time when we were doing this, I blamed Tig as much as I do now. Um, and to see his comeback from this, right. Um, your build up, your build back, I should say, this must've been a really confusing time with the character. Cause you didn't know a lot. Right. I just know that this scene is the most Shakespearean this show's been for quite some time. I remember Jack's being, Charlie being told, sit up, Tig, when you come, I want you to be down. Mm. The king is up there. You're, you're the servant down here. However you want to process that. I remember Sutter saying something like that. I remember Charlie listening to something like that. It's, it's like Jax has saved Tig's life. And because I've just lost my best friend, 90% because of you, 100%, 50%, whatever percentage you want to put in this mess that we're all in, you will forever from now, and you watch, I kind of remember this now a little bit, Tig, he's on Jax's side, fucking 100%. And... Yeah, it's it's a very strange. Right, time. and I remember, I remember, and again, we'll wait till I, I don't like making assumptions, but there is a part where you think Jax is gonna like fuck him over, right? And like, there's this whole like Ooh. duplicitous thing. Yeah, there's that that all oh, coming up. Coming but, up. I mean, you talk about the hills and valleys of a character, you know, which you and I have been so fortunate to do on this yeah. show. But look at Tig in that scene, and then look at Tig in like season one. Yeah. I mean, just like, like up, down, up, down, like everywhere. And, you know, Charles and I would, I just told you that Charles and I went out to. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad you're still seeing him. I love that guy. We went out to lunch yesterday and I told you, he said something that was really interesting. I'm going to give him credit because I know he listens to these. He said on TV, it's really easy, different from film. To film, you and I know we craft characters, we get to become them, we get to kind of take a chance and then we set them and then we can, we only have a short time. I mean, when I say short time, some movies go five months, but you only have a short time to live with this character and then it's gone. Right. Unless there's sequels, which is, you know, whatever, that's not really what we do. But it's like, okay, so we do it and we go. With TV, actors can get comfortable in characters, meaning that if you're on a hit show, you can be the same character for seven years and people will go, man, he's really good on that show. But really, you haven't really done much since you've become no stretching. that same. There's been no There's stretching. No stretching. You've been that same person, especially if you're on like a procedural type show, like a cop or whatever. You yeah. might have an emotional moment, but usually you track in the same in the same line across the whole thing. You and I were so fortunate. Opie was so fortunate. You know, no a lot doubt. of these, no a lot doubt. of people no were doubt. so fortunate that we got to kind of go everywhere, right? And go and and almost like reinvent. Yeah, and them I, all I, the I time. told you this. You know this, and the and our fans know this probably. But I, when Sutter, I, I he said, I said, you got to show me something, and he showed me a scene that was so violent. And so I said, it's not for me. It's not for me. I, I got to see more. I got And he looked me in the face. And he said, I don't I don't have more yet. I've got ideas. But trust me, Kim, come along because Tig Traeger, is he going to be psychotic? Yeah. Tough? Yeah. Is he going to be sergeant? Arms? Yeah. Does he make me? Yeah. Shoots before he thinks? Yeah. But he's going to cry. He's going to laugh. He's going to he's going to be a moral compass of the yeah. club. You need to come along and trust me, please. And he he was right. I mean, no matter how much more we all wanted or less or I don't understand what this is about. There's no doubt that you and I were on that side of the tree that was given a character that you just said, the hills and the valleys yep. and the mountains and yep. the streams. We got to play that shit, man, for seven years and it was fucking beautiful. And this yeah. is a moment where you've never seen, and I don't think you ever see Tig like that ever again, that moment right here. Yeah, and, and, and you know, this is, and, and using the Opie one as an example, because this is kind of the, the last, you know, we kind of see of him. I mean, I know we do see him in episode five, so we weren't wrong. Um, I think it was Marlon Brando who said it, or maybe Carl Malden or somebody said, you know, the greatest actors, you know, uh, and the greatest mm. characters you could play are dangerous with vulnerability. Yeah. And there's beautiful. also a kindness to them. There's like these three beautiful. elements that you beautiful. look for. And uh, Opie really had the same thing that, you know, you and I were fortunate and a lot of other people that a lot of characters on Sons had where they're dangerous, but they're also vulnerable. And, and, uh, 
and man, Opie kind of got to show it's, it all in this episode. He did, and and you know him tossing jacks around in that prison, and yeah. you know just the last scene that they were doing, even though it was elongated, broke up into two or three scenes. He's tossing him around, and we wouldn't be here if he would have let me kill Clay. And you know, yep. there's just so many, but 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 man, when Opie exploded with me beat the crap out of me and i'm mm-hmm. doing that just hit me more kill me i don't I, you know just stuff like that where it came out of nowhere for opie and ryan played those those beats he's so really good at playing the oak man he was the oak he was the redwood you know he was yeah. the redwood in the redwood original where you couldn't get through the bark sometimes where he'd be yeah. like he'd be talking to uh uh lila's character and you're like what does he mean what does he, he you know really what does he think? really feel yeah and and then you know the stuff with piney and and all this kind of stuff and um this really is man i don't know if the show's ever the same after this i don't know isn't it cool that we get to experience these freaking reviews in a show we've seen a third of the episodes and to forget certain things, but then to remember certain things. I remember I shot a scene. It didn't make the final cut. I know. And, and, and the Opie death. Look how emotional you got today. I oh mean, honest God, to- I literally almost broke. Come on. I mean, come on. Nine years ago. It's almost 10 years ago. Come on. 2012. Come on. Okay. Anyway, fuck off. All right. Fuck off. That I was love so you. good. That was I love you more. R.I.P. Opie Winston. Whoa. What was Opie? Hey, do you know Opie's first name? The character? No. Me neither. If anybody knows it, tell us because I don't know either. I do know. Oh, they know. They know it all. There was a first name. Um. All right. Oh, Harry. So, Harry. Harry. Was Harry. It Harry? I got it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got it before we left. Good. Harry you. Opie Winston. You win the. It. You win the golden ribbon. All right. I love you, brother. Get out. Hey, of I here. love you too. Hey, all Emilio. Right. I think, and that was an incredible episode, bro. Wow. Hard stuff to talk about. Hmm. What an episode. Monumental. Hey, we got this. See ya. I love you, buddy. Love you, buddy.